Oh, yeah. Well, it's that time, everyone. It is time for uh, part two of Quarantine Kitchen Happy Hour. And this is a, a very special happy hour. It is actually my birthday today, but we're having a little party, but it's kind of a secret, okay? So uh, it's it's a surprise party, okay? So don't tell me. Um, anyway, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finishing up with that pasta that I had today. Uh, uh, we did that this morning. I rolled it out. I cut a bunch of fettuccine noodles, and I am going to turn that into a carbonara this afternoon. This is going to be a very, very chill afternoon. Uh, it's going to be an easy one, okay? So there's a little mise en place to put together, you know, just a little, uh, uh, you know, everything that we need to, to do this dish. We're going to roll all of that out. And once it's all ready to go, it's not going to take any time at all to put this dish together. Okay. Uh, so before we get started, gosh, it is happy hour. I'm going to bust out a little wine here that uh, I wanted to try. I've been chilling it. It's a columbard. We used to see these columbard grapes uh, uh, years ago. Gosh, back in the 80s, we would see these French columbards around. But it's a very nice, drinkable, light white wine. It's a uh, Rousseau, white Rousseau columbard. I believe this is from uh, Solano County. Yes. So um, let me go ahead and get that cracked. I got an opener here, and we'll get this party started, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well today. Start of another week of quarantine. Oh, it's uh, been going on a while. I've been doing these every Monday, at least, with additional shows here and there. And uh, I think I'm up to, uh, this will be my 13th episode, counting this morning, today, together, this evening, together. This will be number 13, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm kind of breaking into the interview game as well. I got a few people that I'm trying to line up for Wednesday to have another uh, uh, little interview show, the Between the Two Stoves that I'm doing on the side, okay? Just keeping me kind of occupied uh, through the uh, through the season of Corona. I just found out, uh, I just finished my last paying gig the other day. It was, uh, I was teaching teaching at one of the local community colleges and I just heard, I, I teach at a, 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 a corrections facility and, and I just decided we're not doing that this summer. I don't think we're gonna be doing that. And so uh, I'm, I'm kind of out of work until summer. So you might be seeing me doing a little little more of this stuff on the side. Uh, let me get a little sip here, guys. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So another to another uh, quarantine kitchen happy hour and another Monday together with you guys. Uh, I, I am uh, another another part of the story. I'm kind of on my own tonight. My wife is out of town. And uh, so you guys are, are what I got. OK, I'm glad you guys all showed up. Let me see who's here. I'm getting some uh, comments out there. I see my uh, my cousin Lily's out there. Hey, happy birthday to you, too. Hey, uh, Art, good to see you, and uh, let's see. And Shelby's out there. Hey, good to see you, girl. Uh, let's see, part two, what did I miss? Uh, we had. Let's talk about that, okay? I had a little pasta class this morning. I went over pasta basics, and, you know, it's up on my page right now, but I'm going to take that and edit it and get it up on my YouTube channel. Everything I got is up on my YouTube channel, so if you guys want to go over there, it's Industry Cooking Classes channel, and uh, just, just subscribe to it. I don't know if you guys know it, but those little – those little icons that you see on the videos, those little knives, you click that thing and boom, you subscribe, right? And so that I don't know if everybody knows that. So go over there and, and subscribe to my vids. I, I'm, gosh, you know, before I'm done, you're going to have culinary school from start to finish on that thing. Uh, uh, I, I basically run a whole program out of this con corrections facility I, I'm involved with. I don't run the whole thing, right? But I'm involved with it. And we put together a whole program that I teach. I teach every aspect of it. And, and basically that's what I'm running through in these in these little quarantine kitchens, right? I, I say it all the time. You guys hear this all the time. Anyway, um, so what's today all about? Okay. We're 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 setting up a, a, a station again. This is this is a day about mise en place. It's that that idea of all in minute cooking where everything's kind of ready to go. And then when it's time to fire it, um, it takes you like three to five minutes to actually make the plate of food, right? And so uh, it's, this is all for this to succeed. This is all about mise en place. You've got to have everything all lined up and in its place, okay? That's kind of the idea of mise en place. I always feel like it's so rude to drink in front of everyone when I can't offer it. Oh, that is nicely chilled. That is delicious. Um, again, Rousseau, Columbard. It's not a, a grape that you see every day out there, 2018, you know, very fresh, right? As, as most whites are, right? But um, gosh, really, really easy to drink. And it's got a nice little acidic crispness to it, almost like green apples or something like that, that is going to work really well with this really, really rich carbonara that we're going to be making today. Oh, very happy about this. 
<laughs> and as I said, folks, uh, hey, there's no hurry tonight, okay? Uh, uh, this is going to be a really quick one, okay? So um, mm, let me get another little taste of this. Uh, by the way, I should mention, I keep talking about my great friend Amy Gravish out at the, uh, uh, the PIP Wine Bar in Dixon, and she's also out at Gravish Farm. She's the gal who helped me with my chicken processing a few weeks back, and uh, um, she hooked me up with my ingredients for tonight. I've got some beautiful duck eggs. They're big old knockers, you know? I mean, they're, they're, they're really big guys, you know? Here's one right here. I'd say about one and a half times the size of a chicken egg, okay? So um, I'm going to be using that for my carbonara, and she also raises mule foot hogs out there, and she has some bacon cured, and so I'm going to be using some of that. You're going to be seeing some of her stuff in this. So uh, this is this shows about as much as as this this really amazing lady and and what she produces out there. It's very much uh, her ingredients today, okay? Um, and that's what spurred this whole night. <clears throat> so. As I said, this evening's about kind of setting up a station. It's all about, uh, we're gonna be making pasta again. You're gonna kind of see this. And it's basically kind of a saute dish or what I said, like a, a, an a la minute kind of a thing to the minute more, more exactly, okay? So um, uh, let's go ahead and kind of take a look at what we're gonna be doing here. Uh, let me uh, show you the ingredients. There's just a few ingredients in this. I broke these out this morning. And there they are, okay? It's really, really simple. As everything that I put out there, um, just like everything else I've ever done, everything that I do is just so simple. There's only about five, maybe six ingredients in this. I try to keep things really, really simple for you guys because I'm trying to teach a technique, not some big recipe full of ingredients, okay? So um, you can kind of see it starts out with about a pound of pasta in there and then i believe we've got two duck eggs i'm trying to see it from here yeah two duck eggs uh, uh or chicken eggs is what i wrote it for i'm just going to use one of these duck eggs and i'm really going to kind of ease up on the pasta too I, i'm just cooking for myself tonight so i'm just doing just this one plate so i'm just going to do one duck egg um let's see we've got parmesan cheese in there and we've got some black pepper we've got garlic i got a bunch of garlic here that i gotta cut and uh, we've got parsley. I, I think that's five ingredients. There's really not much going on. I do also, as part of my mise en place, um, I needed to get some water on the fire. And so I've got some water here for my pasta. And I'm going to go ahead and get that ready to go right now. I'm going to throw a little olive oil in there. And we're going to be, you know, this is this is standard grain cooking technique, pasta cooking technique. We usually get our liquid up to a boil. And we usually season that liquid a lot of the time when appropriate, and I think pasta is appropriate. So I'm gonna put a good amount of salt in there. And that water's been at a boil, and it's just gonna sit over here on a super low flame, so it's ready to go when I want it to be ready. If you guys are entertaining and you're doing a pasta dish or something like that, just do that. Have that, that pot at the boil, keep a lid on it, keep it on a super low flame. When I need it, I turn that puppy back on and it's gonna be right back at the boil, okay? So it's all ready to go. So that's out of the way. I mentioned that duck egg. I've got that. I'll show you the other ingredients I have. Let me kind of get this down there. So I've got my pepper grinder that you always see. I've got a duck egg. I've got some garlic. Let me bust out the cheese here. And just kind of show you what I have. That's better. Um, so there is that mule foot bacon, and I want to show you this. This is a very unique type of hog. I've used this bacon before when I did a Coco Vaughn class. Um, so you've seen this before. These hogs are um, bred and raised for the fat content. Look how fatty that pork belly was uh, that they made that bacon with, okay? Extremely fatty. These are known as lard hogs, and this is what we needed back in the old days. We needed that uh, when we didn't have, you know, all of these you know, vegetable oils in a bottle and things like that, right? And so we're going to be cooking that down. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. And the taste of this is very unique. It's just like, you know, any animal around the world, you know, uh, uh, if you, it, it all depends on what they eat and how they're raised. And, and you're going to get a very, very unique flavor profile from this stuff. Uh, so uh, uh, you will definitely taste that if you have this experience. Next, I've got a bunch of parsley leaves cleaned. I've kind of torn them up. I've got a couple of bigger pieces here. I wanted to show you the leaves are really, really big on these guys. So I'm going to kind of clean those guys up. And then I already pre-shredded my cheese. This is a this is Parmesan Reggiano. And a word about the cheese, okay?
a little bit of glare, a little too much light there. But uh, I'll try and shade that. That looks better. Um, a word about the cheese. You need to get the real stuff for this. If you buy that pre-shredded stuff, those heavy shreds or whatever, um, in, that's in the little plastic tub. I mean, that stuff is made of plastic, basically. It doesn't melt into this stuff. You can't make a sauce out of that stuff. So you got to get the real stuff and then kind of shred it in there for this. Or, um, you know, or have a very, very fine grate, but you're still going to have that that graininess to it, okay? So I've pre-shredded that. I want to, um, I, I have just a little tail out of school here, okay? I added a little bit of Romano. I had this little teeny piece of uh, Romano in there, very similar, fairly similar flavor profile, okay? Nice salt to it and I want, just wanted to use it up so I blended it in there it's quarantine kitchen I'm trying to just use what I have okay um, I'm gonna keep this cheese cold okay I'm gonna get right back in there and let's see I think I've shown you all of the ingredients except for one now this is kind of unique to me but I add a little butter into my carbonara as well we're really gonna be using the fat out of the bacon I want to get that bacon flavor in there but I also want butter together. And then when I add garlic to it, okay, that you see over here, when I add that garlic in there, it's just a match made in heaven. Bacon fat, garlic, and butter together. It's so insane. And so it, it really is gonna kind of give a little extra edge to my carbonara, okay? It's uh, kind of my little uh, my, my little secret thing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, that butter's ready to go. I'm just gonna throw it inside here. And I just need to process these few things and we're ready to make a carbonara, quite honestly. It's a very, very simple dish, okay? So let's kind of go through what I have here. I'll just finish up this parsley real quick. My egg doesn't, you know, nothing needs to happen with that. And I think you guys can all see that board there. Um, I kind of left these leaves on their big leaves and each leaf is kind of like a triad. So I just kind of pull each one of those apart and I'm just gonna be putting whole leaves in here instead of chopping my parsley. In the past, I've kind of shown you chopped herbs. I showed you a chiffonade parsley, you know, or chiffonade something where I just kind of shred it. And this is just another thing. I like that natural look of those big leaves. And you get this big, this big fresh parsley bite, that big grassy bite kind of wakes up your palate in the middle of all of the big, big fatty richness of this dish. Now I keep talking about the richness of this dish. Um, we're basically uh, having basically cheese and um, partially cooked egg in here. And that egg is going to kind of thicken when it gets a little bit hotter. And that's gonna create that idea of that look of a cream sauce basically. But it's like egg and cheese. This is like considered one of those naughty, naughty dishes. And, and just don't even worry about, it. I mean, just, just put it off to the side that there's also bacon in this stuff classically. Um, and I should say a word about peas okay a lot of people um you'll a lot of people put peas in their in their uh um carbonara but that is not like the traditional thing it's just like a side thing and, and quite frankly I, I you know i see chefs that get upset when they see peas in the carbonara that it's so overused and it wasn't like an original thing in the dish but you can have peas if you want i have to say peas are available right now at some of those farmer markets they're just coming out and so uh if you see those peas anytime you see those peas you need to fall on them with everything you got. Grab as many as you can because they are so rare. If you've never had a fresh pea, by the way, you've only had those frozen peas or got for big canned peas or something like that, you have to try a fresh pea. It's just night and day. It's not even the same vegetable. It's not like it's it's not even like it's playing the same sport as the other vegetables. Okay. It's completely unique and 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 beautiful. They're precious every little pea that you get. Okay. So uh if you please do try those if you ever get a chance. Okay. I should point out, I talk about all these crazy ingredients and everything, but you don't need crazy ingredients. I'm using duck eggs today. Uh, you know, the recipe I gave you, that's not for duck eggs, that's for chicken eggs, okay? I'm using this mule foot bacon today. Um, hey, that's not, it's not really what I, I need. You know, you can, you can use regular bacon, right? It's just kind of special and kind of cool that we have so many things around here that we have access to if we, if we just get out and look for it, okay? Um, really what I ought to be doing, I'm kind of messing with the uh, parsley to kill a little time, but what I ought to be doing is, is starting to render, okay? We talked about like setting up the station and usually when I'm setting up a station, I need to get things cooking. I need to get things on the fire. That's really one of the first things I kind of worry about. So um, bacon is kind of one of the things that's gonna take a longer amount of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got a pan on the fire and 
I'm using this double handle pan that I use sometimes in here just because it's it's shiny inside and you can kind of see what's going on in there. And uh, it's nice and wide and shallow. So it's I'm using it more for video purposes than anything else. I Usually I'm, I would normally do more of a, a, a straight sided saute pan here or something like that. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of heat going on this thing, okay? I'm probably on about three out of 10 right now. Just a little bit, bit of warmth. Now I'm gonna get my mule foot hog bacon. Look how fatty that is. Let me kind of pull that down so you guys can see a little better. There you go. Now, look at that piece of mule foot bacon, a little bit of glare there, but there you can see it nicely there. Really, really fatty. Now, when we're cutting this, I have used this bacon before, and we have talked about this. We're cutting this into a cut called, we call a lardone, okay? And they're just big, wide juliennes. Let me try and get that on there a little better. This is better. Wide juliennes, okay? So I'm maybe that's a, a little more than a quarter inch wide. And I'm going straight across the bacon. We're not cutting long ways, okay? Or I'm not cutting it down into short pieces and cutting it this way. When we cut across the bacon, we get meat and fat, meat and fat. I'm gonna turn this over. Get those last little pieces. And I am gonna go ahead and start in my pan over here. My pan's getting a little warm. So there it is. And I'm gonna start with a little bit of water. <coughs> I still have bacon hand over here that I'm not using. I gotta wash my hand. I'm gonna start this with a little bit of water. And then I'm gonna drop my bacon in. And that water is gonna help that bacon kind of separate out. Melts the fat in between the pieces. And I was three out of 10, now I'm kind of kicking it up. Now that I got that water in there, I don't have to worry about burning or anything like that. And I'm just gonna kick it on up. And now I'm gonna wash my hands while that goes, okay? I got to say, I really should have gotten that going before I started messing with parsley and stuff like that, quite honestly. Bad chef. We use a little soap here, soapy goodness. And that is part one. I think this rendering is going to take longer than the entire dish itself. As we're doing this, we're looking for the items of prep that take the most time. And that is what we want to start first. That's why I say I really should have got that bacon going before anything else. Okay, let's take another look at it. Get a little closer here. And I've got my trusty wooden spoon. And I'm just going to gently knock those little pieces around a little bit and try and separate them. Like I said, that water is helping that bacon kind of separate those pieces, melting that fat slightly. And they'll start coming together. I want to be pretty gentle. I don't want to get I don't want to get the pan brown. I want to get the bacon brown. I want nice clean fat. We kind of take our time with this. There we go. Okay, so that's all spread out. If I start seeing color in there, what I'm going to do is start hitting it with a little splashes of water to control that color. We've done this in other classes too. I don't want a real dark color in that pan. So right now I'm on about five, maybe six out of 10. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my board. And we're, we're rolling, it's gonna be good. By the way, I did taste this mule foot bacon before from Grabish Farm in Dixon and uh, it was quite stunning. I used it in that cook of on we did a few weeks back. It was unbelievable. Farm raised hog tastes completely different from what you are used to. Let's see who's out there. Let's see. Gina, good to see you. Carissa, good to see you. All right. And I see Randy. I see Amy's out there. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Roberta Walker, good to see you, young lady. Welcome, welcome. I see Roberta, that means uh, that's a game I play. Every time I see Roberta, I take a drink. <laughs> Sounds like my pan's going a little hot. We'll take another look at that. And there it is. 
no color to worry about. I'm going to knock those pieces apart a little bit. And we're just going to kind of cruise and drink a little wine. I think that's what's going on right now, ladies and gentlemen, is a little bit of wine consumption while I cook. Stir and drink. And we're not getting crazy, but it is a celebration. Celebrate good time. Oh, yeah. That wasn't in my range. Again, I've still got boiling water in here. Ah, my nose is itching. We still have to clean garlic. That mule foot hog bacon is really rendering some fat. That's what it's all about. I, uh, I have a container here where I keep my bacon fat. I talk about this all the time. I use these rendered fats in the kitchen. I've got my strainer in there ready to go. So when this is done, if I have excess fat, which I will, I'm going to go ahead and save that to add to my kitty over here. Feed the kitty. I'm going to give this another little stir. Oh, look at that. Oh, dear. Oh, no, chef. Oh, no. What do I do? I've got a little bit of browning on the edge of that pan. Well, what I do is I control that brown with a little bit of water. Tiny splash. It's going to react. And I get over there and I clean that area. I'm deglazing. I'm going to go ahead, since I'm getting so much color, I'm going to ease up on that heat. Not what I'm looking for. Spread things out. And I'm going to do another little deglaze here. You guys have seen me do this before. And it's just tiny little splashes. Clean it up. Clean it up. And then everything's nice and clean. What I don't want to do is start burning the pan. Now, it was going, it was a little aggressive there. So I don't know if you caught that, but I just turned it down. Let me take a look under the, uh, under the machine, and it's probably about 4 out of 10 right now, okay? It's still going, but it's not rocking, okay? And, you know, I don't know. Hey, I was going a little hotter than I wanted to there, but it's okay. I use that, that trick of using the water to kind of control the heat, control the color. If you have water in the pan, I've said this before, if you have water in the pan, browning can't occur, okay? You won't get browning if there's water in there. Water doesn't get hot enough to brown. All right, so my bacon's cruising along. It's beautiful. I really should cut some garlic, but I was trying to chill a little bit and, you know, drink a little wine. Let me do another. Ah, delicious. I really like that. Hussard of uh, Columbard. Since I'm going to be working on garlic, I think I will slow this down ever so slightly. I'm going to ease it up to about two out of 10, maybe three, I think. I think I'll actually add a little bit more water. That's another thing. If I need to step away from a pot like this, I can add a little water to it. And it's not going to burn when I step away. Kind of clean it up a little in there. Kind of evens out the color. It gets the color off the pan and onto the bacon. And while I'm cutting garlic, that water is going to simmer out of there, and then it'll go back to rendering again. Oh, yeah, that's a good little trick right there. That's a million-dollar trick, and they never talk about that stuff, you know, uh, on, on food TV. You know, they just don't. Those little wine cook tricks. Okay, so one of my pieces of garlic is already peeled, but I'm gonna I'm gonna want about uh, maybe about three four cloves of garlic. I'm only really making one plate of pasta here for myself, so uh, I think I'll do like three giant cloves here, and uh, that'll be enough, I think. So the first thing I do when I'm cleaning garlic, I do this. I've done it so often, I feel like I don't have to explain, but I really should. I take off that little woody stem on the bottom there, and then I go through and I give them all a little crack, and that one's already peeled. And then once it's cracked, I just roll it in my hand, and it just falls out of its skin. It just kind of cracks the skin up all around, and it falls out. If, that's what, how I do it if I just have a couple of them. There's that trick where you can uh, kind of just 
crack the garlic and put it into a couple of bowls and shake them around. You know, a Tupperware works for that too. So sometimes I'll do that. If I have a ton of this stuff, I crack all of the shells and I put them into a Tupperware and I just shake them up really, really good and the, the peels just fall off of them. A lot of the peels. Since I have a little liquid in there, I can turn up the heat a little more. That's kind of one of those little tricks I would do. Now I'm back, you know, I took off and now that I'm back, I can turn up the heat and start cranking this and use that liquid to kind of control heat in the pan. So turning it up, we're gonna start evaporating water out of there. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and chop my garlic. So I'm gonna do a chopped garlic here, not a sliced. I've done sliced in most of my recipes, but I wanna kind of reinforce that chop, okay? So this is just a standard one. I'm gonna go ahead and start by smashing my garlic cloves. And you can see there's fibers in that garlic and they all run in one direction. I'm doing the same with the next one. You can see the fibers practically, trust me. And then I cut across them, you know? I'm not trying to line them up perfectly every time or anything, but if you're cutting across those fibers, that's a pretty efficient direction to go. And once I do that, I take the side of my knife again. Let me stir my pot. We're cooking still. This, uh, let me show you this. Look how much fat. That was like, that was two slices of bacon, okay? They were half size slices. Those were half slices. So there was four pieces when I cut them up. That's two slices of bacon. They were big ones, but that is a lot of fat in there is, is kind of what I'm pointing out. Lots of fat. Uh, this, this bacon is getting very, very close. I'm going to turn it down and let it kind of cruise out the rest of its little rendering life here. Boy, I better get a container because it's it's almost there. It's It's turning color before my eyes right now. So let me get a little container here. I'm just going to lay it out on a plate. I don't want to stack it up. Uh, because, you know, then it gets a little soggy, but I'm pulling it out. It is not super crispy. It's just this side of crispy. And I'm actually going to turn this flame all the way off for now. I want that fat to come down and heat a little. I love all the uh, crispy brown bacon fond that's kind of floating around in the pan. So here's the bacon, and I want to spread it out. It'll stay a little crisper, and I'm just going to kick it off to the side. I still need to get back to chopping that garlic, but I wanted to just show you this pan. It has a ton of fat in there, just from those two slices of bacon. Look at all that. And you see all that residue in there. That residue is flavor. That is fond, and that is our friend. We like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now, I'll get back to this garlic. I, I want to deal with this real quick. I don't need all of that fat in there. That was a very hearty yield. And I was actually hoping to get a little extra fat out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, strain out some of that fat and I'm going to leave some of it in there. Okay, here we go. I've got a really fine mesh here and I'm leaving a good tablespoon and a half in there, you know. That's, a, that's almost an ounce of oil in there. I really want a lot of fat here to coat my noodles. That's what one of the one of the uh, steps is gonna be. We want fat to coat the noodles. I still got a hefty little bit of fat out of there and I've just got some delicious bacon fond in that strainer that I'm gonna knock out into my pan here too. That's all good. And I bet uh, Jennifer would agree with me. I see Jennifer out there. Ms. Carissa, currently rendering fat off leftover tri-tip. Thinking of you, I'm going to try some tofu in it. Isn't that amazing, guys? You know, you you go for that cool, you know, healthy tofu, all vegan and everything. But hey, you can cook it in that rendered beef fat or whatever it is, right? It's uh, uh, these these some of these fats. I mean, this this mule foot hog fat is softer than butter. Okay, it's less saturated than than butter is. Okay, it's actually considered a very healthy fat, high in omegas and and all of that good stuff that all those nutritionists that know a heck of a lot more about that stuff. They all talk about that stuff all day long. I just see it as a, 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 a fairly. A, it's a healthy ingredient. It's it's natural. It doesn't have the chemicals in it. You know that you get in factory farming and and 
factory produced meats and antibiotics. They just avoid all of that stuff. Um, this is this is the cleanest product you're going to get your hands on. When you run into a farmer that's producing these meats um, uh, and, and they're selling those meats, you need to jump on that stuff. It's a little more expensive. In fact, I won't lie, it's, it's considerably more expensive, but these are unique dining experiences. And we live in one of the great culinary regions of the world okay we really really do and so if you are able if you go to these farmers markets you see those farmers out there selling these natural meats like this you you need to jump all over that stuff and try this stuff out because it's a completely different different experience